Hi, everybody. Things seem to be getting weirder and weirder as the coronavirus outbreak continues. How are you doing in the midst of all this? We tend to process things in different ways. At this point, I kind of view it as an adventure, something to be conquered. Maybe it's due to my love of backpacking, even winter backpacking, where it's man against the elements. You literally carry everything on your back and you survive using just what you have with you. Now my wife Monica, on the other hand, she does not share my sentiments. She would not use the word adventure in describing this. She is feeling totally discombobulated. All her normal stuff is, well, no longer normal. Routines, work, connections, and interactions have all been dis disrupted, nebulizing a clear sense of direction. Granted, my winter backpacking adventures are only a few days long, so I could easily change my tune as this wears on. Last Sunday, Chris gave an encouraging message on dealing with anxiety in troubling times. I'm guessing if you're watching this, you've already watched that. If that's not the case, this will make more sense if you do. I've been reflecting on his message all week. As Chris brings out, God is big enough to handle all that's going on in our world, even a pandemic. And he is completely trustworthy, worthy of our trust in these times. Though we can't see what's ahead, we can know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. One part of Chris's message I've been particularly meditating on is the Soren Kierkegaard analogy. He spoke of how when taking a carriage ride out into the country with the lanterns lit, all is comfortable and cozy. However, it's these very comforts that become a distraction to experiencing the glory of the starlit sky. If I can say it this way, the artificial lights close at hand prohibit you from seeing the splendor of the real light. In this time, when so many routines are being disrupted and normal pleasures and freedoms are, quote, being taken away, could this be a gift from God to us? Could God be allowing the lamps around our carriage to be dim so we could experience a greater glory, the glory of the light of heaven? Paul discovered that God's power is perfected in our weakness. He gives us some insight in 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. Therefore, we do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. For momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory, far beyond all comparison, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So let's gaze intently at the everlasting light, and even be thankful that the lights around us are being dimmed. And let us tap into something that's way beyond us, God's ever-radiant glory and power. Let me just interject here. God is never the source of calamity. John 10.10 10 tells us, The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his job description. Whenever we see loss, death, and destruction, we know it's the hand of the enemy. That verse goes on to reveal Jesus comes to give life in its fullness. He does such a magnificent job of redeeming bad situations and bringing good to them, many think he caused them. That's not true. Look at heaven and you'll see what God brings. You can't bring what you don't have. He only comes to bring life. Well, all around the world, life is being altered. I don't know about you, but I don't want to come out of this the same way I went in. I want to come out stronger, freer, more joyful, more loving than I was. I believe that God is all around us, setting us up for just that. He's calling us into a closer relationship with Him. When sailors of old encountered a fierce storm, they would throw every non-essential item overboard in an effort to save the ship. Ask Jonah, he'll tell you, it's true. Another biblical example is Acts 27, where they jettisoned the cargo and even the ship's tackle from the storm-tossed ship Paul was on. In Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, we are told, cast off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. This is a time when everything seems to be spinning out of control. 
while the centrifugal force is spinning everyone to the edges, I encourage you to deliberately reach for the center. Jesus is the eye of the storm, where we can have peace while everything is swirling around us. Carve out some time and headspace to connect with Jesus in a deeper way. Lay aside everything that hinders and trips you up. I know, I know, kids are off school and your work has most likely been altered or suspended and everything is in upheaval. It will take being intentional. But our God is greater than all that is going around us, not to mention more beautiful and calming. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in times of trouble, says the psalmist. So, let's take advantage of this opportunity, where lights are being dimmed on our carriages, to experience the full glory of heaven. There are going to be lots of chances ahead to share the love of Jesus around us, and we are going to want to be full ourselves, so we have plenty to give away. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that you are ever faithful and that you are more than big enough to handle all that's around us. Lord, we thank you that you're giving us opportunity to lean into you at this time, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that we could just uh, give our hearts to you in a fuller measure, Lord, that we could be filled to overflowing, Lord, so that we'd have plenty to give out to meet the needs all around us. People are gonna need your hope, Lord, and to know your love in this time. So let us be those those ones that would share that. In Jesus' name, amen.